everyone, welcome to the stream. Uh, today we are doing our July game of the month of the One Ring RPG. Uh, and we're doing this in a little bit of an interesting manner. So uh, usually I have a whole crew, you see a lot of other videos around me with my uh, table ready to play. Uh, but with the One Ring uh, today, we're just going to be doing a solo play. Uh, so the One Ring has some really cool solo rules. Uh, so the, the Strider system, uh, so appropriately named uh, for Aragorn there. Uh, and today we're going to be running that. So uh, it's going to be actually, I can't stop saying we, it's going to be just me and myself and I here uh, running the, uh, the, the solo play uh, adventure. Uh, so uh, this will probably be a little bit of a quicker, <laughs> quicker one uh, than our usual ones, uh, just due to not having a whole crew with me. Uh, but yeah, so uh, basically today we're going to be going through the One Ring system. I'm going to be showing off a little bit of how it plays and how everything functions, uh, just so you guys can get a look at this amazing system uh, and get to see how the, the, the Lord of the Rings system plays uh, in practice. Uh, I know a lot of people... Uh, Kind of jumping into tabletop and D&D &D and fantasy, uh, the Lord of the Rings was kind of like their big their big inspiration for it. Uh, and uh, I know a lot of people uh, have, uh, and I've played in those myself included, uh, have tried to uh, fit kind of fit like a D and d or try to meld D&D &D or other systems into a Lord of the Rings system. Uh, and with this, it's designed for it. Uh, it's kind of set up to be able to run the Lord of the Rings fantasy and kind of get everything that you want out of it uh, without having to tweak it or kind of break it to, <laughs> break it to hell on that side. Uh, so check it out. Uh, kind of uh, This will be a solo play, so it'll play a little different if you have a whole crew with you. Uh, but luckily, uh, it's from what I've seen so far, it's pretty pretty intuitive uh none of the mechanics seem too kind of far off uh the or too left field or too hard to place uh so it should be one that's easy to pick up for you and your crew uh if you do decide uh, to run it uh so nothing too complicated uh definitely something that's uh, gonna be easy to uh to pick up and go so uh with this too so uh we're going to be this is our game of the month so we're going to be giving away a copy uh of the pdf system for the one ring to a lucky viewer uh so i'm going to throw in the command uh but basically as long as you put in uh the ring into the system uh you will be entered to win uh the competition so uh throw that ring in there i uh, kind of claim your one ring on this side uh and maybe you'll be one of the lucky ring winners too so let me give you a little demonstration on how to to go there so just type the ring in there it doesn't matter with the caps or anything like that uh and you'll be entered to win the drawing uh so we're gonna probably just give that a few seconds here just uh, get everybody on board and actually while we're getting waiting for a few more people to join i'm gonna give you a little bit of a run through of my character uh for those of you who've seen uh the youtube video already uh we went through when we built syrian uh and syrian is a ranger from the north uh he is uh he's, he's all he's a kind of a lone wolf uh which fits for the strider side uh he's all about fighting the enemy and fighting the agents of sauron but he does so on his own uh he works for uh galarian uh but Typically, he's just kind of uh, on his own, kind of hunting through uh, the wilds of uh, Middle-earth, uh, trying to make sure that the people are safe. So we're going to go through, uh, and kind of with this system, so we're doing the Strider, and for those uh, who may not be familiar, the Strider's a DM-less system with this one. So uh, basically what that means is, uh, so it, there's a lot of roll tables and a lot of different things uh, that you guys are going to get to see that help you resolve the actions. Uh, so typically, there are things you may ask for a, a DM to kind of uh, adjudicate or kind of make their own uh, ruling. Uh, with this system, you're going to have to roll on a table, and it's going to tell you what they're, they're going to do. So uh, let me flip the view a little bit, too. So uh, we're going to flip over to our roll 20 view, uh, and you're going to see uh, the kind of the, the map of middle earth uh and they've got a really cool map with this system too and there's a couple cool things they do with it uh and we're going to kind of figure out where we are and where we're going next so because one of the first things we are going to do uh is we're going to determine where uh kind of what our quest will be because they actually have some pretty cool uh options on the system for being able to roll and uh figure out what you're going what your quest is and kind of what you're going to be doing just to keep it uh fresh for you as you're going through like your own little choose your own adventure uh so let me uh flip over there Uh, 
Oh, there we go. Sorry, my roll 20 is loading a little slow. There we go. Flipped. So uh, you should see a, a version of the map. Uh, it's a little zoomed out. So let me zoom it back for uh, everybody on that side. Uh, so you see kind of the map uh, of Middle Earth uh, and all of the sites. And you see Syrian there. And oh, I didn't describe Syrian. So outside of being a ranger from the north. So uh, he wields a spear, kind of a spear that with like old dark wood uh, that's clearly seen use. It's well maintained, but uh, definitely has some scuffs and uh, marks from uh, the frequent and uh, nearly uh, perilous battles that he's been in. Uh, you also see these rocking uh, kind of uh, leathery armor. Uh, it's pretty light, built for travel. Uh, and of course, he's got this this bit cloak with a big hood uh, and it's deep black. Uh, definitely appropriate for sneaking around the wilds uh, and uh, kind of uh, maneuvering through uh, Middle Earth. So that's uh, a little bit on Syrian. Uh, but one of the things we're going to do first, so we've got uh, Galerian, daughter of uh, Derhael, and I probably butchered those names, uh, but we're going to roll a d6 using the Strider table to see what type of mission we're going to jump into with our crew. Uh, so just a second, you're going to see that uh, window pop open, uh, and we're going to see kind of how this plays out. And uh, This is going to be a probably the most improvisation I've done for a game. Because uh, usually I, I come in with a little bit of prep uh, and knowing exactly what's going to happen. Uh, but with this one, uh, I thought with us doing all the, the, the tables, it'd be best just to come in blind and roll out with the crew and uh, let everybody see what we get. Uh, so uh, I'm going to show this to everybody. So there's a D6, and if you're using the Strider rules, uh, you'll see that each of the different quest givers has a D6 of uh, different opportunities uh, that you can pursue. Oops, and I lost my video there. Let me put my video back in. So we'll figure that out uh, in a second, but we'll, let's roll this in there uh, just so we could uh, see how this comes out for the group, uh, or for myself, I should say. Uh, so we're going to roll that D6, uh, and we're going to see what option we get there. Uh, so we got a three. Uh, so Galerian, uh, you see, uh, uh, you see... Uh, Syrian kind of patrol into uh, the Silver Harbors uh, and meets with Galerian, the elven daughter of Durhil. Uh, and you see it's kind of a... It, he definitely stands out as he kind of goes into what this more fanciful and kind of elegant elven hall. Uh, and he meets with uh, the, the elf, uh, or Galerian, uh, and we got a three. So this is enemy patrols along the road are targeting uh, merchants and supply wagons. Uh, who leads these deadly patrols? Uh, so he's, as he goes through, Galarian kind of gives him a little bit of a run through and goes, Syrian, we, we appreciate you coming to join us. Uh, we've had grave news uh, of orcish raids attacking uh, along the merchant paths. Uh, we need your assistance to make sure that we can keep these paths clear uh, for the travelers and make sure that the shadow does not gain any further hold uh, into the realm. Uh, and with that, uh, you see Syrian kind of give a good day of nod and he'll ask, who is, who's leading these patrols? Uh, and you see him kind of uh, look back. He's got uh, he's a dark uh, dark black skin, uh, dreads, uh, along with the cloak and kind of the shield. Uh, he's got uh, his shield on his back and his spear kind of uh, in his hand, but in a, a restful position uh, and just very intent and intense look uh, as he goes through uh, and kind of looks at Galarian, uh, his quest griffin, his patron, uh, the person he's worked with for years, uh, taking odd jobs and uh, trying to fight to protect the realm. Uh, so uh, he, you see that kind of intense look uh, as he stares through at her, uh, and she goes, these raids have been led by an orc named Varlock. Varlock the Terrible. Uh, he has been 
terrorizing these lands with his orcish band, uh, and unfortunately, as of yet, we have not been able to find his stronghold. Uh, we'll need you to locate where he has been held, or kind of where he's holding up, uh, and if you can deal with him, perfect. Otherwise, send for reinforcements, uh, and we will come and aid you uh, in capturing this fiend. Uh, and you see Syrian kind of uh, gives a, a nod there uh, and doesn't say too much more and begins to head out. Uh, so next we're going to kind of move into uh, one of the core pieces uh, with this system, which is kind of going over your route to the system. Uh, so uh, with this... Uh, with this uh, system, so one of the cool things they do is they have uh, multiple phases uh, within the One Ring system. Uh, so you've got your journey, uh, the phase, which is kind of like classic Lord of the Rings where you're kind of maneuvering through the wilds and you're at the uh, kind of the mercy of nature and uh, your foes uh, as you're maneuvering through Middle Earth. Uh, so we're going to throw up the DM map. Uh, so this is the kind of the core map for the game, uh, and this is the end of the DM side for it. Uh, and you see it's got kind of all the, the different landscapes within the Lord of the Rings uh, kind of universe. Uh, you see uh, just kind of a, a smattering of pieces. Uh, and with this, let me find uh, where we are at. So let me zoom in a little bit more. So we're at the Grey Havens currently. Uh, and with this too, so usually your DM would decide kind of where this location is going to be. Um, I want it to be a little bit of a trek for him. Uh, so his is going to be uh, outside of the green areas, which the green areas are a little bit safer. We're going to say he has to go all the way over here. Uh, so with that, we're going to kind of plot out using the journey phase, uh, his best route to that position. Uh, and while we're doing that too let me throw in there too so for anybody that's joined uh, if you've just come in uh don't forget to throw in uh the one ring uh to throw in ring uh for the bot to be able to get you into the list on that side uh so check it out uh make sure we can uh, get you counted and uh maybe you'll be one of the lucky winners to, uh, to be able to bring this home for you and your crew sweet so yeah so what we're doing next is we are going to kind of plot our route uh, so we're going from the Grey Havens, uh, and one of the things you have to do with this system during the journey phase, and we're going to show you some of the tables a bit later, uh, is you have to kind of plot out uh, how long it will take you to kind of cross through uh, the area. So with this, we're going from the Grey Havens, uh, and we're going to say our target is right over there. So that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10 spaces so this matters for a couple of reasons uh so let's and one of the cool things you do with this is you actually mark your travel route uh so i'm using pdf on that side so forgive the clumsy highlighting uh but we're gonna go through uh kind of mark that route out uh and basically what we're gonna do now since we counted 10 spaces uh we're gonna be in the journey phase Typically, if you have a full party, there's four roles that people would occupy. Uh, so you've got the guide, who's going to be one making your uh, travel roles, which are going to determine how well you kind of progress along that route and kind of what events you may come across during your journeys. Uh, you've got the hunter, you've got the guide. Uh, so you've got the hunter, the uh, scout, as well as the lookout. Uh, so with this one, uh, since we are all on our own lonesome, uh, uh, Syrian is going to do all all of the different roles. Uh, so nice thing with uh, playing solo is you do get to roll quite a bit, uh, even if you do have to RP with yourself. <laughs> uh, so sweet. So uh, I'm going to do the travel roll. So with this system, so basically with uh, any of the... Uh, <laughs> definitely gambling without the risk of loss on that side. Uh, so it's me against me. How can I lose? <laughs> Uh, so with this, uh, I'm going to do the travel roll. Uh, and the nice thing with this system is kind of how you set DCs, which is perfect for it. It's the same for the solo play as well as the regular play. Uh, but for setting the DCs, uh, you set uh, your TN number, your target number is set by your attribute in the skill minus either 20 or 18. 
So they recommend doing 18 if you're doing kind of lower experience play or if you're doing strider play uh, to give yourself a little bit uh, better of a TN or DC. So since I'm doing strider play, I minus mine from uh, 18. So uh, all of my 10s will kind of reflect that. Uh, so for travel, that's going to be a heart skill. Uh, I've got two dice in there. It's not one of my favorite skills or favored skills, I should say. So I'm going to roll that and my TN is 13. So we'll see how that goes for him. Oh, where's my roll 20 at? Uh, so no bonus dice. Ah, uh, so it is a failure. Uh, so I had to beat the target number of 12, or sorry, 13, uh, and I got a 12. So uh, with this system, you roll your feet die, and then for the success die, and the feet die is a d12. Uh, and if you have a favored skill, you get to roll 2d12. Uh, so this is actually a decent skill for him. He had two success die to roll, so a d12 plus 2d6. Should have been all right to hit 13, but Syrian has a rough go of it. Uh, so what this means, and he's, uh, so now that we're doing the journey phase, uh, he's going to be able to go two hexes before an event takes place. Uh, so he's going to kind of move her through, and uh, let me mark that on our map so we can kind of see how that will go. But yeah, so he is going to, let me see if I can put a little mark there. Uh, so he'll make it to just right, actually it's right about the A uh, as uh, he goes through on his adventure there. Uh, and what that means, so he has two days of uninterrupted traveling, uh, but then he actually uh, is going to have an event. So we're going to do uh, an event roll. Uh, so the first thing you do with uh, an event roll uh, is when an event comes up, whether it be in solo play or strider uh, with uh, kind of just by yourself, uh, is you roll uh, a d6. So we rolled another d6. Uh, with this one, we got a 1. Uh, and with the one, I, I believe that is the guide uh, goes up. Uh, and basically what that D6 does, it determines who is going to be kind of resolving the event. Uh, so uh, with that, uh, you have a one to two, actually a scouts, three to four lookouts, five to six hunters. Uh, so I rolled the scout uh, and each of the different roles within that event kind of adventuring party has a different skill that they have to roll for it. Uh, so uh, scouts are explore. Uh, and basically with this system, so you kind of roll what the event is and then what happens afterwards, depending on a failure or um, kind of a consequence on that side. And then you get to kind of narrate out what took place. Uh, so uh, let's, let's see how that goes. So explore for Syrian. I think he's decent at that. So Sirius kind of trekking through the wilds, uh, making his way uh, towards the, uh, the, the the kind of ho or the, the, the suspected hideout or hunting grounds of Varnock, uh, and he's kind of just keeping his eyes out, trying to take in the land. Uh, so explores the wit skill, and he's decent wits. Ah, uh, but the dice are not with him today. Uh, so he rolled a six on his feet die, a seven on his success die, uh, but he misses his target number by one again uh, when it comes to wits. Uh, so what that means is we're going to roll on the journey events table. So let me show this to everybody. Uh, and I'm going to flip back to my roll 20 screen. and Hopefully uh, my camera is now working there. Uh, and while we get that camera fixed, so I'll fix that as we're going through, but you see the journey events uh, within. Uh, so what this basically means is we're going to roll a d12, uh, and it's going to see kind of what comes up uh, for this event. Uh, so let me make this a little bigger so everybody can see that. Uh, so you see there's a number of different options that can take place for our, our unfortunate Syrian who has had some uh, bad dice luck to start off this adventure. Uh, so we're going to see kind of what comes through for him. Uh, there we go. There we go. So let me figure out my camera there. I don't know why it wasn't working on that screen. But now it should be popping up for you guys too so you can see me as we're going into the Roll20 Syrian. So we've got these D12 options and let's see what comes up. So 10, uh, so with that chance meeting, 
if the roll succeeds, no fatigue is gained, and you may improvise an encounter favoring your player hero. Uh, so, unfortunately, we got a failure on this one. So, uh, let me... Uh, think. So one of the nice things too within the book uh, are there's some examples on kind of some consequences uh, that can take place for these events because these events uh, as you go through uh, the DM or the story guide lore master in the system narrates what the success and failure and kind of what the event looks like. Uh, so with our guy, uh, he's kind of going through in his journey and uh, he's going to meet somebody uh, with kind of a a chance meeting that's not going to be great. Uh, so as we go through, uh, he's kind of patrolling through the wilds. Uh, he kind of gets a little clumsy and not clumsy. Uh, just his mind is elsewhere. Uh, he's worried about this orc who's been ravaging the lands uh, and is kind of distracting him and keeping him from being kind of as aware as he could be. Uh, so he is going to uh, kind of hear a crunching behind him uh, and look, uh, and he sees kind of a lone um, kind of uh, human uh, wearing a, a bow on his back uh, and kind of a knife in his hand. Uh, and we're going to kind of use one of the other Roll20, or not Roll20, the Strider devices to kind of see how this goes. Because uh, one of the things usually with your DM, you kind of ask kind of what's going to happen here. Uh, is he, is this... Hunter, or this lone human with a, a knife, is he going to make an attack, or is he going to uh, kind of just watch and have an eerie and kind of make it uh, so that our uh, hero is just on edge? So we're using the telling table. So I'm going to roll a uh, d12, uh, and basically what that means uh, is we're going to see uh, if this uh, uh, if this is going to be, if he's... And if you have to phrase it as a yes or no answer, so I'm going to say, is this lone traveler who looks armed and dangerous, is he going to pick a fight with Syrian, uh, or is he just going to uh, watch and kind of just gle glare at Syrian, keeping him on edge for the rest of the day? So, D12, uh, and you see that they've got the numbers there for determining how that plays out. Uh, oops, I still got the solo table events on there, so let me get rid of that uh, so you guys can see the actual telling table and see how we, we did there. There we go. So we rolled uh, with this a D8 uh, on our dice. Uh, so a D8, it looks like uh, it's doubtful he'll attack. Uh, so uh, as you see him kind of uh, staring menacingly uh, uh, at the uh, kind of at Syrian uh, and uh, he decides not uh, to attack. So you kind of see him holding uh, the blade uh, and Syrian kind of slowly backs up kind of uh, maneuvering away uh, from the ferocious looking bandit on the road, but getting through unscathed. Uh, but a little bit more tired because one of the things you saw with that too is he got one fatigue from uh, going through uh, this adventure. Uh, so that's kind of a little bit on the event side so you get to roll those uh, and we'll probably do a couple more of those because we only got two spaces. Uh, maybe our dice luck will go a little better there. Uh, but I see a couple things have flown into the comments. Yeah, so yeah, so Todd, yeah, so your questions are, so it's kind of a yes or no for it. Uh, so you have to kind of place it in a good or bad, uh, or yes or no, kind of a binary situation. So with that one, I was going to, will he attack or won't he attack on that side? Uh, and luckily, and well, that one's one of our decent dice luck there, is we got a doubtful he'll attack. Uh, and so uh, he kind of looked menacingly, uh, but he did not pursue uh, our hero on that side. Uh, before we go on to, for anybody that's new into the thread, uh, we are giving away a copy of the One Ring PDF. It won't have Strider mode. Uh, it'll just be kind of the core rule book, but Strider mode is like five bucks if, uh, if you want to pick it up and play some of your own, uh, kind of like a choose your own adventure uh, with uh, without a crew. It worked out well for me this time because uh, my usual crew who plays with me was summer is a little bit harder to get everybody together. And uh, with this one, a lot of the crew wasn't able to play. So uh, I was like, let me try Strider and uh, check it out. Uh, it, so, uh, 
been pretty fun so far. Definitely a lot more talking than I'm used to for uh, say, running an RPG, but I hope you guys are enjoying it. Uh, but yeah, definitely make sure to throw Ring into the uh, the comment fields. Uh, get yourself entered to win. So far, we only have two people in, so uh, throw it in and uh, make sure you get your chance to bring home the system. Uh, and I'll probably do another uh, another running of this one too with kind of a, a full crew as well, just kind of see how it plays. But with this one, I just wanted to make sure we could get a game in and kind of show off some of the mechanics and kind of the flavor for it because this is a really cool system for uh, doing the Lord of the Rings flavor. Uh, sweet. So I'm going to maneuver us back over to the map screen uh, so we can kind of keep trotting forward and keep plotting uh, Syrian's path to find out where Varnock is and the orcs that are uh, plaguing the merchant's pass. Uh, so let's let's see how that goes. We've gotten two out of our ten squares so far, uh, and basically with the journey phase, what's going to happen is uh, we're going to do another merchant check uh, to see uh, how uh, how this goes for Var uh, not Varnock, uh, how this goes for Syrian, and see. Uh, if he has any better luck. Uh, so with this, he's going to, since he's the the guide, hunter, scout, and all rolled into one, he's going to start off with the guide's role of making an explorer check. Ah, uh, sweet, that roll. De Sirian is not really good at exploring today. Uh, after being scared by that bandit, uh, he's kind of on guard, and uh, as he's moving through uh, the wilds of Middle Earth, uh, he's kind of through the, the advanced st stretches of trees and forests. Uh, he's just paranoid. Uh, his blade, uh, or his spear, kind of raised, his buckler and shield raised as well. Uh, and he's just not really. He's seeing but not looking. Uh, so he is going to uh, fail the explore check which means we only get another two spaces before we have another event. Uh, and that's going to put us uh, at four spaces total, and we're six away from making it to the uh, to our destination. Uh, so uh, let's see how this goes uh, again. Uh, so since we failed this event, uh, what we're going to be doing now is uh, we're in the where we failed the explore phase. We get those two spaces before we go into the next event. Uh, we're actually going to do another D6 roll and to see which kind of the skills or the uh, the options or roles and within the adventuring party come up, and that'll determine what skill we roll. Uh, so he's sticking with the scout today. So one through two are scouts on this side. So he's going to. Uh, do uh what was it scout again i think that was explore travel oh scouts or explore i mixed those up so guide is travel i should have rolled a travel there uh so we'll just flip those uh he failed the explore roll but we'll do the travel for his event target uh and we'll see how that goes because uh, one of the things that I became in late, I mentioned uh, with this system, when you're doing the journey phase and kind of making these epic journeys through Middle Earth, each of the party has a role within those. Or if you have a four party, uh, per, or four person party, each of them has a role. Less you have to double up, more you have to either, uh, or less you have to or kind of double up on the other side too. So uh, with this, uh, we did travel before. Uh, so we did explore before, so we'll do travel for this one. And this not going our way today. Uh, so uh, he failed this one. Uh, and he had a decent chance because uh, he has a D12 on that one and two D6s. Uh, so I think by average, yeah, by average, he should have beat that. Uh, but nice uh, tell a story. Uh, so we've gone our four hexes and this is uh, four days of travel uh, through the wilderness. Uh, but things just keep coming after poor Syrian uh, after uh, his event. Uh, kind of run in with that bandit uh now he's going to be getting a whole new uh journey event so i'm going to put the journey events back on screen so you guys can see uh what fate's going to befall him as we roll this d12 uh, and as we roll the d12 too uh if you're new throw in ring into the chat uh and make sure you get your chance to uh to win a copy of the system uh so uh throw that in i'll throw the contest thing in too so far uh, we just have three uh in there so uh make sure you can get in and uh get your chance to, uh, to win Oof, all right take a little sip here all right so mishap 
Uh, so we have failed the roll, uh, and we get two fatigue points for having failed uh, this roll. Uh, and we've got to find a mishap. Uh, so as he's maneuvering through the forest, uh, he's paranoid. He's kind of looking out and trying to move quickly to uh, lose uh, the, the trail in case that lone bandit is hunting him. Uh, and as he's going through, uh, he slips uh, and kind of maneuver slips over uh, a fallen tree uh, and kind of falls and crashes into the ground and begins to slide down uh, a hill kind of just brushing through branches and kind of clamoring and going end over end uh, as he kind of just biffs it down uh, this hill uh, and kind of as he stands up uh, battered bruised uh, he's not hurt he's not injured uh, but it's definitely taking his toll uh, and he gains another two fatigue points uh, as he's having this truly perilous journey uh, through the mountains or through the the forest of middle earth uh sweet so we've gone four uh, and we'll probably do two more rolls of this uh hopefully uh we'll uh get through this section without too much more but uh the way the dice are going today uh it may be a little bit more on that side as well so hopefully we'll have some good luck there uh, so let me uh, roll another, uh, this time travel check, because uh, travel is what the guide will roll, uh, and see if we go for it. And actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend a hope. So one of the cool things you can do with this system is you have hope, because one of the, the again, if you've read Lord of the Rings, actually if you've seen the movies, hope's kind of a core piece and kind of keeping your spirits high and kind of believing that good will prevail and that uh, the darkness will be vanquished is like a huge piece of kind of their lore and kind of their, just their overall theme. And one of the cool ways the game brings that into reality is you're able to use hope points to get extra dice to roll. So with this, uh, if it was just a regular kind of uh if you were playing it within a group if you had that and if you didn't have the the inspired condition you would just add one extra dice to your roll so one extra d6 uh but since it's strider mode and i'm all by myself uh you get to add two d6 because all of your rolls are considered inspired uh so i'm going to spin that hope bringing this current hope down uh from uh 13 to 12 uh and he is going to see if he can get a success here Uh, that we got a success. All right. Uh, finally beat with it. So we got a 18 on this side. Uh, we didn't get any. So one of the things too uh, with critting in the system, uh, your D12, your feet die is what crits. Uh, so if you got a 12, which is, uh, and this it wouldn't be if you were looking at their actual dice, uh, it doesn't have a 12 on it. It has Gandalf symbol. And on the one side, the eye of Sar uh, Sauron uh, with this, or eye of Mordor. Uh, so uh, I got a five. So definitely more than enough to succeed and have a successful travel uh so with the successful travel you get to move three hex spaces uh so that puts us at seven so uh three away from uh being able to uh bring it home uh, and make it towards our actual event uh so we're gonna do one more on that side so and since i passed the uh past that side uh we don't have to uh, we go three, actually we go three until we roll the event, so we do need to do another event roll on that side. I forgot what success, you don't get a freebie on it, you still have an event, you just have more spaces to go before getting an event. Uh, sweet, so it looks like we're mixing it up, so it won't be the scout this time, it will be the lookout. So rather than rolling explore, I'll be rolling awareness. Uh, so he's still, tr Syrian's trekking through the woods, kind of continuing to make his way towards uh, where Varnock the orc is holed up and hopefully he can kind of bring it in and protect uh, for those merchants who've been assaulted by the orc. Uh, but let's see how, uh, so he gets a three. Uh, so he's going to roll uh, that awareness. Where did my sheet go? And yeah, so he's, he's kind of going through there. Uh, and we'll see how he kind of comes out with this. 
And awareness is one of his favorite skills. And luckily with this system too, it's with strength. Uh, and he's really, really strong. Or not really, really strong. He's, I'm pretty sure he's pretty average. So it's six in strength, five at heart, four in wits. Uh, but with this, he's got a lower target number of 12. Uh, and he also has awareness as a favored skill. Uh, so he has two ranks of it. So he gets to roll 2d6, but he also gets to roll 2d12. So let's see how that goes. Uh, I'm not going to spend any hope on this one. I think I've got this one. Oof, I did not have that one. Uh, so another failure for poor Syrian on this side. Uh, so he rolled... Uh, oh, he got a Gandalf symbol? Uh, but... Oh, no, actually, no, he, he got a great... Uh, he got a success, actually, a great uh, feat success. I thought with uh, the total zero there, uh, he would have failed it. Uh, but he got the, the 12 on that side with the Gandalf symbol, uh, and then the 8 on that side, so 20 all together. Uh, so he actually aces this one. Uh, so he will succeed on his awareness check. Uh, so let's see what his event is, though, still, uh, just so we can kind of uh, iron that portion out. So we're going to roll our D12. Uh, we got 11, and we still have that journey table up on the screen. Uh, so let's make that a little bigger just so we can kind of see that uh, better. Uh, so uh, with his uh, 11 on the screen, what the, what's 11 on this one? Uh, I think that's supposed to be the chance of meeting again. Uh, Yeah, so he's going to have another chance meeting. Uh, this time, uh, since it was favorable, uh, he's not going to lose any fatigue. Uh, he's actually going to meet uh, another ranger, uh, kind of striding through the lands. Uh, also, uh, this ranger, we'll call him... Uh, uh, Aravok. Uh, he's a uh, kind of uh, in a greenish gray cloak. Uh, you see, he's got an axe strapped to his back uh, and a bow in his hand, uh, clearly out hunting within the wilds. Uh, neither one of these are uh, Syrian or uh, uh, Aravok. Uh, neither one are kind of very big talkers, but you see Syrian kind of walk forward, uh, give him a big old predator handshake, uh, and say, oh, It is good to see a friendly face in these lands. I uh, hope your travels are sitting you well. Uh, and you see Arvaka provides, it has been good hunting, but I've seen the shadows deepen and more and more orcs darken the path. Be careful as you go. Uh, and you see kind of a, a Syrian nod uh, and go, yes, uh, I'm preparing to hunt these orcs myself. Go well and stay safe out here. Uh, they kind of exchange the greetings, uh, share with uh, one of the knights uh, over a fire uh, with uh, Arvok sharing his hunt. Uh, men of silence, men of few words, uh, so they don't kind of converse too much uh, for my benefit there. Uh, but they do have a good peaceful night uh, in allowing uh, uh, Syrian to have a one kind of night without being hunted or tracked or uh, falling down hills uh, during his journey. So... We've done three uh, events so far. We're going to do one more success or failure. Uh, just so we can kind of move into the next stages of this. Uh, kind of show off a little bit more uh, of the One Ring system. Uh, so before we do that, uh, we've got a couple more into. Uh, if you haven't already, throw in Ring into uh, the system. Uh, so we can uh, get you in the running for a PDF copy of the One Ring system. It's a pretty sick system. Uh, I, I like it so far. Uh, Strider definitely a little little different. This is my this is my first. I don't think I've mentioned that. This is my first solo RPG. Uh, usually I, I, I'm either a player or DM, uh, mostly DM. Uh, and missing a little bit my uh, throw it to the table bits where I can uh, kind of throw them a question or a problem and let them talk for a bit. But it's pretty cool though. Uh, and actually, Chad, we got a couple good crew inside. So, uh, what do you guys think of the system so far? We've mostly only done the journey phase, uh, and it's kind of cool, and it simulates, and it gives like a a lot of room for what they call the lore master or the GM uh, to kind of improvise. Like they've got like these tables, so you've got rules and structure for it, which I know a lot of people from Five E have complained about that there's not really a good exploration pillar. Uh, but the nice thing is they kind of leave it vague enough with enough suggestions in both the Strider and uh, overall book that you can kind of use it as a baseline to come up with something that may have happened during the travels uh, just to keep everything kind of flowing and uh, unique for the crew
All right. Uh, Sweet, so we are going to... Uh, we're going to do another last journey roll, uh, and we're going to see how that goes. Hopefully no events. As long as uh, the nice thing, as long as you get to your destination by uh, the number of spaces you get to travel. So with a success, you always get three plus one for any Gandalf icons you get. Uh, it's luckily, we're only seven away. So if we succeed, we don't have to worry about uh, doing another event. Uh, but the dice have not been kind uh, to poor Syrian uh, as he's kind of trekked through the wilds of uh, Middle Earth. Uh, so we'll see how it goes for him. Uh, all right. Uh, so with this, uh, so he's uh, his own guide. Uh, he's going to roll another travel check. Uh, his spirit's uplifted a bit from seeing Arvok, one of his friends, one of his fellow rangers, uh, Dunedin, kind of making their way through Middle Earth, fighting back as much as they can against the shadows. Uh, and he kind of takes that uh, and the warm meal that he had from Arvok's hunting, and uh, it kind of looks like inspire him a little bit. So he's going to... Uh, spend a little bit of his hope on this to uh, make it uh, make sure it goes well for him. So he's going to spend one hope so that's going to get him two more d6 he gets to roll on the dice uh, due to him being favored due to being a solo strider. Uh, so travel with two and this one would be a fun one to roll in person Ah, oh, failure. Uh, but this, even with like two extra dice, uh, but this would be a fun one to roll in person because there's a lot of dice you get to roll with it because uh, you always get to roll a d12 uh, and then if you have a success die. Uh, and Sorry if you guys hear squeaking. My dogs are down here squeaking a ball. Uh, but with that, uh, you get to, uh, so you always get to roll the d12 and if it's a favorite skill, you get to roll two d12 and then as many ranks as you have within the d6s for uh, your success die. So this would be kind of cool. I always like to roll a lot of dice at the table and this would be a fun one to do it but the nice thing with roll 20 is it does calculate it for you uh, or i should say uh, maybe not a nice thing for uh, poor syrian because even with four d6 and a d12 rolling he could not beat 13 so he has another failure uh so he has failed three out of his uh four travel checks so it has been slow glowing uh and high fatigue stakes uh for the poor ranger as he makes his way through middle earth so once again, we're going to roll that d6. Uh, so six on this side. So we're going to actually roll for the hunter. He's actually a really good hunter. Uh, so hopefully this will go well for him. Uh, and then we're going to mix it up the rolls this time a little bit. So he's going to roll the hunting, but he's going to roll his d12 first. Uh, and we're going to see what type of event befalls him uh, before we see if it's success or failure. Right, so we got those journey events on this side. Uh, and my dog is squeaking it up. She is all, uh, amped to see how Syrian does uh, with his uh, his trek through the wild. Uh, so with our D12, uh, we got a six uh, again. So with the six, uh, that means we are going to have uh, a mishap if we fail. Uh, so let's see how it goes. Uh, so he's going to make that hunting check. So he's favored on this one. Two ranks. It only has to be the TN12. Uh, I'm not going to save some of my hope, but hopefully he's got this. He does. Uh, so uh, you see, uh, kind of a, as he's go trekking through the forest, uh, this would be a mishap uh, that goes successfully for him. Uh, so as he's trekking through the forest, uh, he hears crunching behind him. Uh, his mind kind of uh, focused on his have that friendly meeting that he encountered. Uh, he's kind of slow to react to the crunching, uh, and out from the forest burst a wicked-looking boar. Uh, you see, it's kind of a shallow skin, long, gnarly-looking tongue. Husk, uh, that comes charging right at poor Syrian. Uh, Syrian, fortunately, though, uh, expert hunter, he kind of uh, pulls an arrow out from his quiver, throws it into his bow, uh, and pulls back this in the nick of time, letting loose an arrow uh, that catches the boar uh, right through the neck and sends it kind of just uh, bowling to the ground, uh, digging a trench and kind of sending it just into the next life. Uh, and you see Syrian kind of take a deep breath. 
uh, as he kind of uh, calls into the uh, the boar and kind of just gingerly takes his arrow out uh, and kind of makes sure that the beast is passed on to the next life. Uh, and you see he's somewhat sad because he is unable to kind of usually he's uh, the type of hunter that would take his time uh skinning the boar and uh making sure that he uses all of the uh kind of all the things uh all the pieces of the uh of the creature uh to make sure that nothing is wasted uh but with his travel and just kind of the setback after setback he is exhausted uh, and he just does not have the time to do so uh, sweet. So he is going to uh, m- keep moving forward, uh, and is actually going to be able to arrive at his destination this next time. Because uh, the nice thing with this is he only had one space left to go, uh, so he will make it to uh, the forest. And we'll go back to our map screen too, so you guys can take a look at kind of where he's winding up at. Uh, and we're gonna take a quick break here after we get to that map screen too. Uh, just give me a second to uh, take a little bit of a breath. Uh, so let me go back to the map. Uh, so you see uh, where on the screen we're kind of uh, right, right over here uh, in, into the forest by the hills of uh, Ivanam. Uh, he arrives to the area that has been plagued by these orcs uh, that have been attacking the merchants. Uh, and he's going to begin to investigate and find out what is going on uh, and seeing if he can bring bring peace or kind of find out where Varnak is holed up at and help bring reinforcements to take down uh, this orcish bandit. So we're going to take a quick pause there. Before we do, uh, anybody who has not uh, thrown Ring into the system, make sure to throw uh, Ring in. So basically, we are giving away a copy, a PDF copy of the One Ring system uh, to get yourself into the running. All you have to do is put Ring into uh, the chat, uh, and it'll get you automatically entered by our Nightbot. Uh, and we're going to give a raffle away uh, at the end of the session. Uh, so put that ring in there, uh, and maybe you will be one of the lucky winners on that side. Uh, so check that out. Uh, the other thing I will promote before I'm going to take a quick break, just to, uh, get another glass of water <laughs> and rest my voice a little bit. Uh, if you haven't, so each game, each month we choose a different game that we're going to focus on throughout the month. Uh, this is our fourth month, I think, doing it. So, so far we've done, uh, the Power Rangers RPG by Renegade Games. Uh, we've done Coyote and Crow by Coyote and Crow. Uh, there, uh, and if you've heard of Coyote and Crow, they are a pretty cool. Uh, indigenous game uh, or indigenous company that made a game uh, about uh, what would happen to North America if colonization never happened so kind of good reflection of indigenous culture check it out they're newer uh, definitely show them some love I liked that system uh, and then uh, the last one we did right before uh, Lancer RPG system uh, that one's probably one of my favorites that we've done so far this year uh, really cool mech system if you like mech combat uh, I like a little bit of crunch uh, Lancer is the game for you. Uh, I'm definitely doing some more videos and uh, as well as games for that one. Uh, that one hit me kind of right in the perfect crunch and balance spot and different kind of customizations. And I love mechs, so that was a pretty cool one. I think it's one of my favorites so far. Uh, so that's one of the we did too. Uh, but all the long way to say that each month we do a different game and we do YouTube videos throughout the month going over how to play the system. So we look to our first impressions and this is me looking through the book and kind of thumbing through it and seeing kind of what's cool about it uh then we do how to build a pc which i found is like the best way to learn a new system just going through and seeing what's important uh and then we also go into the mechanics of the system uh showing how to set up and how to run and actually play the game uh and then depending on the game uh, sometimes we will uh, do a different mechanic that's a little bit unique for it uh or build an npc i love building monsters so a lot of times like lancer the power rangers i built my custom monster for the one ring we did the strider mode so i wanted a video all about the strider mode uh so if you are new to uh both my channel uh and my youtube i'm gonna throw my youtube link uh into the chat uh drop a sub each month we pick a different one and i'm going to show what our new game of the month is in a few minutes uh so uh stay tuned for that uh, throw ring into the chat, but I am going to take a quick break uh, and I will be right back.
All right, welcome back, everybody. I took a little bit of a break, got some water in. Uh, just uh, usually I uh, stream uh, pretty much every week. Uh, I usually run games on Tuesdays, uh, but usually it's DM. I'm not talking too much, <laughs> not talking this much. So I got a little bit of water, refreshment on this side. We're going to dive back into the One Ring RPG. Uh, before we do that, one thing I do want to shout out. Uh, we are giving away a copy of that PDF uh, of the One Ring RPG Core Rulebook. Uh, so if you saw this, saw any of my videos, or uh, saw this video, or saw this uh, live play, and like, hey, I want to bring this back to my crew, uh, you can do that. Uh, we do this for each game, because one of the, like, the big missions, or kind of the why behind my channel is I wanted, I wanted to play more systems outside of 5e, and like, I love 5e, I'm not a 5e basher, but uh, I feel like a lot of times like, people can get hung up with 5e and not move on, and I was kind of becoming one of those people, so I wanted to expand out uh, and play some new RPGs. Uh, so each month, we pick a different RPG uh, and we dive into it uh, and we give away a copy so somebody else can have some fun with it and uh, bring it back to their crew. Uh, and kind of mention that, I'll kind of give a, a way uh, what we're going after next. So uh, let me, there it is. Uh, so for the August uh, game of the month, uh, we're going to be focusing on one of the biggest one, and this is always a system I've never played before too. Uh, so we're going to be doing the uh, Blades in the Dark. Let me look at my camera to make sure this is coming in all right. Yeah, Blades in the Dark system. Uh, so it's one of the, the biggest RPGs that I've not really played, and I've heard nothing but good things about it. Uh, so I'm looking forward to diving into that one. Still got to figure out the schedule for when we'll be holding everything, uh, but stay tuned to our YouTube. Uh, we'll start diving into some first impressions uh, first weekend in August, uh, and uh, more videos to come. Uh, so... Throw a link in our YouTube there, but uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, and then make sure for the one ring, you throw your, uh, your name into the hat uh, with the ring, and maybe you'll be one of the lucky winners, too. Uh, and speaking of that, so I'm giving away the PDF, but one thing I recommend, and something I, I've been doing a lot lately, uh, and I, I may go back and rebuy Power Rangers because I, I just bought the PDF for Power Rangers, uh, but it's nice having kind of the hard physical copies, so you see between that uh, and uh, Blades in the Dark, uh, it's just nice to have those copies. So uh, even if you're playing like primarily online, like I am now, uh, buy the book. It's just nice to be able to thumb through those, especially as you're learning a new system. Uh, looking at the PDF is perfect because it's great because you can share it with your table uh, and make sure they can kind of all see uh, what's needed to be done there. But having that physical copy can just, uh, I don't know, there's just nothing. It's like, I'm probably old school enough on that side. There's just nothing like it for me. So uh, I recommend, uh, even with the giving away the PDF, that if you get a chance, pick up a physical copy. Uh, you, you, won't be, uh, you won't be let down by it. Uh, so, perfect. That's that. Let's dive back into it. So, Syrian uh, has made his way uh, across Middle Earth, trekking through the wilderness, uh, just kind of peril after peril after peril uh, due to the fates not being kind to him uh, and the shadows of Mordor deepening and darkening, making the world just a perilous place to travel, uh, especially alone. Uh, but he does eventually arrive at his destination. So, uh, as he arrives, you see uh, this forest trail, uh, and it's kind of, it's like a, it's a well-worn merchant's path. Uh, it's kind of cut through this heart of the forest, so you see large trees surrounding it, uh, this little kind of cobble, or not cobblestone, but just well-worn dirt and stone path uh, that's definitely shown uh, kind of uh, the marks of a frequent tires and uh, not tires wheels and horses uh kind of traveling through it uh definitely something that's uh been utilized frequently uh and as he's gonna get in here he's going to uh so we're, we're gonna use the telling table too uh so uh with the telling table before so basically we have to ask kind of a yes or no question uh and he's basically going to see uh as does he see any signs of other people in the area uh, so see if it's favorable uh, or unfavorable. Let me put that up too so you guys can see that telling table. Uh, I definitely agree. Physical copies always for that. It's so much better having that physical copy. Uh, sweet. So we're going to get that telling table. Uh, so are there signs of other people or orcs in the area? Uh, so let's see what we find. So we rolled a three. 
Uh, so with this goes yes or no. So it, with a three, uh, one or greater, yes, yeah, so that's certain. There are definitely signs of people in the area. So now one of the other things we're going to do with the system, we haven't got into the lore table yet. Uh, so there are lore tables. Uh, and basically where there's three different tables, and this is another thing that's just Strider only. Uh, yeah, you probably could use it if you ever need some inspiration as a DM for this uh, with a, a table. Uh, but basically for playing Strider, because you can't just kind of make up everything, and sometimes it's good to leave it to chance and see what the dice inspire you on. Uh, so it's divided into three different categories. Action aspect and focus uh so we're going to roll on this side uh to see kind of what aspect is on there so we're going to and the way you do it with this table is you roll a d12 uh and the d12 is going to give you what table you roll upon uh and basically once you have your table you're going to then roll a d6 uh and then you're going to match that d6 up to the aspect that's going to be kind of that applies most to your situation uh, and then sometimes you may have to do multiple rolls to, to make it out there. So we've seen these signs uh, of people or signs of uh, kind of aspects around. Uh, and we're going to see kind of what type of aspect goes with it. Uh, and maybe we'll uh, we'll throw in a, a focus too. What side do we go? Uh, so D12. 11. So let me pull up our lore table. Uh, so you guys should be able to see our lore table now. I'm going to make this a little bigger. Uh, for everybody So we got 11 uh, On that side so oops, that's the wrong lore table Uh, so let me throw that back up. So uh, I forgot what the 11 on this side. So that'll be the, I think it'll be the Gandalf die. Let me look at it real quick. Yeah, so that should be the Gandalf die there. So let me see what we get there. Uh, so we've got that up now. So we'll actually roll our D6. Uh, so with that feet die over there, we'll roll that d6, uh, and let's see what we got. We got a 1 on that one, uh, so we picked the aspect, so flourishing. Hmm. I'm going to roll one more time on that one, because uh, I can't think of a good flourishing description. That's the nice thing with this, so uh, don't try to, like, do it too crazy, but... Uh, always, because you're, you're running this for yourself, so try to give yourself uh, some inspiration <laughs> to run off of. Uh, and flourishing, I am blanking on a good way to have flourishing on this section. So we're going to do that in one more roll on there. Just to hope we get a little bit more suitable for it. Uh, so we are going to see. So that got us a nine and a four. Uh, so on the nine and then a four with it. So Stubborn. Uh, stubborn doesn't really fit in there, but uh, we're going we're gonna to combine the two. So uh, basically, as Syrian arrives uh, within the area looking for signs of the orcs uh, and humans that may have passed, uh, he does find a flourishing merchant uh, trail. Uh, so kind of uh, a group of merchants who are kind of flourishing and kind of doing well in success even with these perilous times. Uh, we'll say they're a group of dwarven merchants. Uh, we're going to play the cliche here because we got stubborn as our other one. Uh, so we got a group of flourishing stubborn dwarven merchants. Uh, you see one of them has a long deep black beard uh, as Syrian approaches kind of cautiously uh, and you hear Syrian call out and go Travelers, uh, you should avoid these roads. Uh, we've heard tales of orcs uh, led by a chieftain named Varnock attacking. Uh, and the orc will, go, or the dwarf will go back. Uh, my name is Darlin. Er, different voice. My name is Darlin. Uh, we, we are of Clan Vexen. We will not cower for orcs. Uh, we bring our carts up and down these paths every month. Uh, just resupply with gold and silver for our weapons and arms that we sell. Uh, we will not cower and we will stick on these paths. 
Uh, so they kind of have a little bit more of an exchange there on that side. I'm not going to go into that too much with, uh, with myself there, but uh, basically these dwarves are pretty, they're pretty stuck in their role, the way. Uh, so what we're going to try to do, uh, so Sirian is going to give his last best argument for them to try to avoid uh, saying, please, take my counsel. Just hold up for a few days. Uh, I am going to scout these roads and see if I can find this fiend uh, and bring him to justice. Uh, then you can go about your business uh, and try to stay uh, and continue your, uh, your, your craft. So he's going to make a persuade check. So with this, he's got to be the TN of 14. He is, I'll be honest, did not build Syrian for persuading. Uh, so we'll see how this goes for him. If he's able to persuade the dwarves uh, or if he has to uh, kind of help these dwarves out for, uh, from orcish attack. Yeah, he, he failed. He failed super hard. Uh, so with this, because does it tell me if it, it didn't? So no, I didn't get the failed die there. Uh, but yeah, he, so he, kind of the dwarf, just with a stony expression, kind of playing with his beard and goes, ah, nah, we're not going to cower from these orcs and listen to a scrawny human telling us what to do and telling us our business. You can tag along if you wish, but we will not, uh, we, we will not hide in fear. Uh, sweet. So basically, yeah, so let's see how this is going to go. So he is. Uh, going to go with uh, the dwarves, uh, and we'll see if he can figure out a good way to bring, uh, maybe we'll have to use the dwarves as bait. Uh, so let's, let's, uh, let's do another roll with the, uh, the lore table and see if we get something cool on the side. So let's see, we've got our aspect, we've got, uh, let's see. Yeah, we're going to roll for an action. See kind of what happens as uh, Syrian starts to travel with these dwarves uh, and see if what happens to Dalin and his merchant company. So, D12. Five. So we're going to go to the fifth lore table. Uh, let me show this for everybody so you guys can see. Uh, so five, and we'll roll our d6. So four, so five and four. Hold, okay. Uh, so uh, you see uh, Dalton kind of scratching his beard once again and say, yeah, well, we won't make it easy for the dwar or for the orcs. Uh, if they want to come get us, we're, we're going to hold up here, circle our wagons, and see if we can catch these orcs uh, and see if they're going to come after us. Uh, sweet. So we're going to do two things here. So we're going to see... Uh, we're first going to do uh, the telling table to see if the orcs do decide to attack uh, Dolan and his merry band of uh, merchant dwarfs. And then we're going to see... Um, well, Syrian, let's see what Syrian can do. Uh, what, what, what of his, which of his skills? Stealth. Uh, so Syrian is going to, uh, he kind of gives a nod to the dwarf. Uh, he's a ranger, a few words. Uh, he is going to try, and they kind of hole up within the forest. He's going to try to find a good perch within a tree uh, with his bow ready. Uh, and see if he can sneak up or kind of hide uh, and stay unnoticed as these orcs potentially may attack. So we got what we're going to do. We got what may happen. So let's pull up our telling table uh, and see if these orcs attack. So if this is going to remember, we have to phrase this kind of a yes or no action. Uh, will orcs attack? One through five, we'll say uh, likely. Six through, uh, so basically one through five, we're going to say it's, it's most likely going to happen. We'll probably roll a d20 or something like that to see if it does happen. Uh, same thing with 6 through 8. Uh, we're going to give it more of an advantage, disadvantage type thing. Uh, it does happen if we get the Gandalf symbol. doesn't happen if we get the Eye of Mordor. Uh, so let's give that a try. Uh, I'm just trying to see if I can roll a feet die normal. Uh, 
Oh, sweet. So uh, ignore the target number on that side. We just did that to see if we could uh, get that D12 on there to make sure we got those symbols correct. I think I may have mixed up the order of the symbols now that I think about it. Uh, but we got a four on that side. Uh, so four, they are very likely to attack. So we're going to roll two D20, and if one of them is ten or higher, we're going to say they do attack. I think there's different rules for that, but I'm blanking on it right now. Uh, so uh, 13, we don't need to roll another. Those orcs are going to attack. Uh, sweet, so let's roll a stealth for Syrian. So you see Syrian kind of perched uh, within the trees. Uh, you get, begin to hear the drum beat. That's like a beat. My desk does not really have a good harmonious beat, but just hear this big thumping, the thump, the thump, the thump, uh, as the orc drums beat uh, and get closer to these band of merchant dwarves. Uh, and we're gonna see how this goes. So he's going to try to surprise them during, uh, the, we're gonna get to do some combat too. So we're gonna see if we can surprise them during this combat round uh, with his stealth. So he's gotta beat his uh, stealth TN, which is under wits of 14. He's good at stealth. He's got two dice, and he's gonna spend a hope uh, point to give himself another two dice on this, because uh, he knows this this is crucial to this plan and to protect these dwarves' lives and to uncover this ferocious orc bandit. Uh, he may needs to stay hidden until the op most opportune moment. Sweet. So success on that side. Uh, no major successes. You haven't gotten any Gandalf die. Uh, but success, uh, so he is able to remain hidden. Uh, and we are going to go into combat. Uh, so you, as uh, you see the scene approach, uh, with Syrian high in the tree, bow strung back, uh, the dwarves, uh, you see about five dwarves circled up uh, with uh, their wagons around them, uh, axes out, hammers out. Uh, and you see this band of orcs approaching them, led by a ferocious looking warrior. Uh, he's got kind of pale gray skin, huge brawny build, uh, carrying an enormous spear uh, and scimitar with him uh, as he walks through, leading his band of orcs uh, into combat. Uh, so we are going to get a surprise round with this. Uh, and basically, actually, before we go into combat stuff too much, uh, remember, we are going to be doing a giveaway with the system, so if you haven't already, throw Ring into the chat uh, for your chance to win a copy of the, the Ring system, so throw that in, uh, and maybe you'll be one of the lucky winners on that side. Uh, if you want to learn a little bit more about uh, the ring mechanics, check out our video. We did one just this morning uh, that goes over the adventuring phase, which is what we've been in through the journey uh, and through some of the, uh, the, the stuff we've done so far. And now we're going to jump into the combat phase of it. Uh, so throw a ring in there. A quick drink there. So uh, sweet. So. We're going to say, so there's a, a band of orcs. Uh, Syrian is going to get the surprise on them. So with this system, you don't roll initiative. Uh, basic combat is divided into two phases. Uh, the, the volley phase, uh, you kind of think as Lord of the Rings, uh, you've, they always have that space where the enemies are too far and everybody's charging and you either throw a knife or throw an axe, or if you've got a bow, you lose some arrows. Uh, so they built that into the system. So. Each combat, unless there's uh, unique circumstances, is going to start off with that volley phase. Uh, what I'm going to say with this one, because uh, we're surprising, we're ambushing these guys, we're going to get two volley phases for poor Syrian. Uh, hopefully he can clear out some orcs uh, as he goes through. Uh, so uh, basically, and since so there's no initiative, uh, the players go first in the system, unless they are the ones surprised, and then the lore master goes. Uh, so I'm going to be kind of playing me against me right now. So we're going to keep this a little bit more cinematic uh, than exact combat, but I do want to show off each of the pieces just in case you're wondering how this system may work. Uh, sweet. So uh, what he's going to do is he's going to roll his bow. Uh, so bows are strength, or combat uh, is all under the strength skill, so it's going to have his strength TN. Uh, so he's got a 12 target number with his strength. Uh, he's got one rank into bows, uh, so he is not the most uh, proficient with bows, but he's at a range and he doesn't want to throw his spear. Uh, so he sh shoots. Oh, did it roll? It did not roll. Let me roll that again. 
Uh, so right now he's uh, since he's doing oh and also too let me go over the stances. Uh, so there are stances with this system. One of the big things with this system uh, versus kind of like uh, kind of how they determine combat, how combat kind of flows. Uh, is typical if you're like in a melee phase, you pick your stance each time. Uh, but with our guy being in a rearward position, uh, he is going to, uh, with him taking the, kind of the volley, he's going to take the rearward position. So he is going to uh, use some of the effects that that gives us, uh, which basically just makes it a little easier for us to do some uh, ranged combat for it. Uh, so with that, let me pull up exactly what volley does, because I'm blanking on that again. Or what, uh, not blah, 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 but the, uh, the rearward guard position does. Uh, so we can only be targeted by ranged attacks. We can only attack using a ranged weapon. This is the volley phase, uh, so that works. We could also do the combat task with prepare shot. But he knows he's got to thin out this orcish horde before it reaches the dwarves. Uh, so he is going to take each of his shots uh, and make them count. Uh, sweet, so rolling for his bow. Uh, spending two hope, or spending one hope for two die. Uh, so with this, they're surprised, so they don't get to add their, uh, they don't get to add their shield to their parry bonus on this side. So uh, he's going to be shooting at one of the orcs, uh, kind of next to the chieftain, hoping to kind of clear out some of these vicious, uh, vicious, uh, enemies of the shadow uh, and make it a little easier his job a little easier uh, so he is going to roll that there uh, and their parry is plus two uh, but not from a shield so with uh, the target things too so your target numbers still apply uh, but you do add their overall parry to it as well so they've got an overall parry of plus two without their shield uh, but even with that too uh, he is able to kind of come through and you see him pull back, let loose an arrow, uh, and you see it pierce right through the head of one of the orcish uh, attackers, dropping him to the ground. Uh, and you see here the beat beat of the drum stop uh, before the chieftain lets out a vicious howl uh, and the true combat will begin. Uh, so that was kind of the surprise round. Well, now we're gonna go and kind of trade uh, trade volleys well, we're gonna do one more round of volleys uh and then we'll get into the melee show a little bit of that off uh as well uh so sweet so we're gonna do another round of volleys uh as uh now poor syrian can be targeted uh so you see uh hordes of orc uh orcish archers kind of pull up uh and three of them are going to take their shot uh at the poor Syrian uh, hiding in the tree. So let's see if they are able to do anything to Syrian. Uh, and while I'm pulling up their stats, uh, feel free if you're new to uh, the, the the stream, uh, make sure to drop uh, drop a follow uh, to the channel as a whole. Uh, make sure to throw yourself into the ring. Uh, or throw yourself into the running to win the run ring system by putting ring into the chat. Uh, so check that out. Uh, maybe you'll be one of the good lucky winners there and get to bring this home for you and your crew. Uh, so this guy is going to be using his bow and you see uh, he kind of pulls out the wicked looking bow. It looks like it was made uh, from the, the, the horn of a beast uh, and they pull it out uh, and draw back. Uh, and you see three archers let loose at our poor hero. Uh, and so my guy is aware. So his total parry, so he gets to add that in there, uh, is uh, too many windows open. So his total parry is 19 uh, with his parry mod. Uh, so he's got that 19 going, so we'll throw that in. Uh, so you see uh, the first one kind of shoots back, plinks off of his armor. Uh, the second one shoots back. Uh, this one you see is kind of putting some hate into the shot. Yeah. 
that one will hit. Uh, so you see the this third one or second one pull back, and we'll just do the third one too now, just so we can knock these out. Oh, two successes! Wow, uh, that's looking a little bit, a little rough for uh, for poor uh, for poor uh, Syrian here. So he's got uh, two hits on the uh, from the the beast so you see two two orc arrows can come and pierce through his armor uh you see kind of blood uh trailing down uh from the gear uh so with that so when you take damage in this system uh you don't have hp you've got endurance uh so the bows both do three damage to him uh so he is going to lose six damage total from his endurance now one of the things that we have to watch out for uh, with this system is if your endurance falls below your load, uh, you become weary. Uh, so my load is 14. My current endurance after uh, after taking that damage is 20. So I'm, I'm getting low uh, on that side uh, as those orcs kind of target Sirius. So you kind of see those arrows flying through the sky. Uh, the other orcs are targeting the dwarfs. Uh, and you see them kind of rampaging towards them. Uh, the dwarfs are uh, kind of holding their own. Uh, you see arrows flying out from the, both sides and axes flying from the dwarfs camp uh, as they kind of trade their volleys. Uh, but now you see Syrian pop down from the tree uh, and rush to join the fray. Uh, we are going to go from the, the volley phase into the uh, the melee phase of the engagement. So as I mentioned earlier, there's always two different kind of phases of battle, that opening volley and then close quarters rounds. So we're jumping into course, close quarters. Uh, so with that, you have three different stances you can choose to use. Uh, so. Uh, you've got the forward stance, which is like a super aggressive where you're kind of slashing down foes, but leaving yourself open for blows. Open, which is a balanced stance, or defensive, which is a defensive stance. Easy on that side. Oh yeah, and welcome to the, the, the stream, uh, uh, Mikey B. Frog Sit. Uh, yeah, thanks for joining, uh, too. Yeah, we're doing the strider mode on this side, so solo play. Uh, so my first time uh, playing the One Ring system as well as playing a solo RPG. Uh, definitely interesting. A uh, lot more talking than I expected. <laughs> uh, but uh, we'll get back into it. Uh, we're diving in uh, with, with uh, Syrian charging through towards a horde of orcs, uh, making eyes with this orcish chief. Uh, the chief throws his spear down and grabs this wicked looking scimitar blade uh, and uh, meets Syrian. And two, uh, one of the orcs' flunky, chief's flunkies comes along with him. To engage with Syrian. Uh, so, since uh, so basically when you go into the melee phase, people get to pick who they engage with. If the players e equal or outnumber the enemy, the players get to decide who they're engaging with. If the enemy outnumbers the players, which Strider mode, we're outnumbered, uh, they get to decide who they're going after. Now, Strider mode actually has additional stance the strider one uh the strider stance uh basically allows you to keep yourself at range for longer uh that could be kind of a cool way to do it if you wanted to play it uh, a little bit more strategic uh but s with syrian you get to pick distinct features uh and flaws with the one ring system um i made him the bold uh, so he's one that's always down for action to rush into the fray, uh, to defend uh, the, the weak and uh, fight against the shadows. Uh, and he's also arrogant. He, he, he thinks he's uh, one of the greatest warriors to grace Middle Earth. Uh, so outnumbered, outgunned, surrounded by orcs, he grabs his spear, jumps from the tree, and rushes to meet them. Uh, and along with that, he is going to do the forward stance. Uh, so that means he's going to be more susceptible to damage, uh, but also uh, more aggressive uh, when dealing out damage or more likely to hit than do damage. Uh, so as that war, war chief and uh, the warrior approach him, uh, he sees the war chief's going to be a hardy foe, uh, so he focuses on the orc to his left. Uh, you see him stab out with a vicious blast of his spear, uh, and we'll see how that goes for him. Uh, so the orcs parry with this one. Uh, this orc does not have parry. Uh, 
Uh, sweet. So you see, uh, it's a success. Uh, so he jabs out with his spear, uh, the blade piercing into the orc warrior, uh, and coming out, uh, and you see a trail of blood, uh, flowing through, uh, and you kind of see, uh, the, the orc kind of, like, hold his stomach for a second, uh, before falling and crumpling to the ground. Uh, and as I mentioned, we're doing a little bit more of a cinematic one with it being kind of me versus me. Uh, I didn't want to extend it too long, but I did want to show off a little bit of the system on that side. Uh, so that orc one-shotted, uh, and now Syrian is left alone with the orc chieftain. Uh, you see the chieftain raise up his wicked-looking uh, scimitar, uh, and he is going to strike down uh, upon poor Syrian. The orc will fail. Uh, so you see uh, Syria kind of du ducks to the side, uh, narrowly missing the orc chief's blow uh, as uh, chaos reigns around them. Uh, you see the rest of the orcs uh, assaulting uh, the... Uh, Kind of uh, surrounding the, the dwarvish merchants, uh, a pitched battle going on between them. Uh, but fortunately, the dwarves are holding their own, uh, more than holding their own. Oh, actually, hold on. Yeah, I'm not the DM here. Uh, let's see how the dwarves are doing. Uh, we're going to use that telling table. Uh, and so uh, I'm going to pull that telling table back up. So uh, we're going to see how they're doing. So uh, let's pull that up. So it's one of the cool things here. So uh, I gotta remember sometimes I'm not the DM, uh, and uh, with this we get to use kind of keep it up to chance and see what the dice story the dice will tell us. Uh, so uh, we'll have that telling screen pop up. So we're gonna say, are the orcs or the dwarfs faring well against the orcs? So if we get a one or greater, uh, so one to three, it's certain we're not gonna need to do any rolls for it. Uh, if we get a four. Uh, we're going to roll a d20, 11 plus, dwarfs are doing okay. Uh, if it's middling, uh, we're going to roll that same d20, eight or below, uh, 10 or below, uh, they are doing pretty poorly. Uh, and then if we get the eye or the mark of Gandalf, uh, we'll kind of factor that in. So let's see how we're doing. Oof. All right. So with this system, as I mentioned, there are two different uh, special icons on the dice. Uh, so you've got the Mark of Gandalf and the Eye of uh, Sauron. Uh, or Eye of Sauron, or I think it's called the Eye of Mordor in this. Uh, oh, and I, met, I did mess up the dice numbers. So 12 is Mark of Gandalf, 11 is the Mark of uh, Eye of Mordor. Uh, I thought one was uh, the Eye of Mordor. Uh, so... With that means, and with our telling table, you see this is always no with an extreme result or twist. So we said, are the dwarves doing well? No, they're not. They are doing very, very badly. Uh, and we're also going to roll on the ill-fated table. So uh, when something goes bad, there's an ill fortune. Uh, and we'll see. Let me th show this to you. I'm not sure if much of these will apply to our situation here. Uh, but always good to kind of see if it is... Uh, and see kind of what's going on here. Okay. Uh, so we're going to roll a d12. Seven. Uh, we're going to see if this applies. So we're going to make this apply. So plagued by troubling visions or thoughts. So he looks out across the battlefield and he sees these once hardy dwarf merchants fighting for their lives and failing. Uh, you see the orcish horde descend upon these dwarven merchants uh, and you see three of the five fall to from wounds. Arrows being kind of pelted through, 
these orcish scimitars cutting them down uh, and you see these valiant dwarves kind of crash to the ground uh, the, the blood leaking from them as their lives drain away and this is the terrible kind of thought or the terrible thing that Syrian sees as he takes just a moment to glance away from the orc war chief Varnuk that he's fighting against and take a look at the, the, the dwarven merchants uh, so they're not doing well so with that being ill-fated uh, i probably could have rolled for how many of them died but i decided to be a little harsh to myself on that side uh so three of them are lost two are still up can can syrian end this quickly enough to keep his uh keep the, the roads clear and keep these dwarves uh, the rest of the dwarves alive uh so you see Syrian kind of steals himself, raises his shield up high, pulls his spear back. Uh, he unleashes with a blow, uh, giving it everything he has uh, with his spear. Uh, so he's going up against the Orc War Chief, and what's the Orc War Chief's? Parry. So he, the Orc War Chief has a plus three parry. Success? A great success. All right. Uh, so that means... Uh, what does a great success mean? Uh, I didn't get any Gandalf dice. So if, you, if I got a Gandalf mark, I would be able to do special damage to the creature. I do like a heavy blow, a piercing blow. Uh, there's another one in there fending off. But I didn't get the Gandalf mark. But I still got a great success, so I will hit uh, and deal four injury damage. Uh, so this orc chief is a little hardier than the others. So you see Siri jumps through with his spear. I uh, kind of see a trail of blood leave from the Varnuk, the orc chieftain. Uh, but he is still holding his ground, uh, still prepared to fight, still ready to deal damage to this lone ranger and the dwarfs he decided to defend. So the Orc Chief is going to get another shot at Syrian. Uh, and you see him going all out with the Slash. Oof, alright. So he will have uh, a great success too. Uh, luckily, uh, no uh, Gandalf die for him either. Because uh, Syrian's looking uh, a little bit... Uh, he's starting to look rough. Uh, he is, uh, what's that, minus five? Oh, he is one away from being weary. Uh, so you see uh, this blade descend down, Syrian distracted, looking at the dwarven merchants who are being assaulted, uh, and he, he just glances up and just sees the blade in time, just jump back a little, but the orc kind of makes a decision across his chest, blood flowing through. Syrian is definitely getting near his last legs, all the border of weariness, uh, but he knows he must continue to press on uh, and fight uh, to protect the dwarves and protect these roads and do his duty to his patron at Galarian. Ooh, so, all right. Uh, oh, Thanks, Mikey, too. I appreciate that. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, this is my first time doing a solo play, so <laughs> I definitely appreciate seeing that. Uh, sweet. So, uh, basically, and it kind of keeps going through. Uh, so, uh, Siri, he's going to keep his forward stance. Uh, he knows, like, he is near his limit, but as I said, Siri is Syrian the bull. He is not going to cower. He's not going to hide back. He is going to end this orc before the orc can target the dwarves. Uh, so he is going to go in. He's going to spend a hope point to get some bonus dice. Uh, targets parries plus three. Extraordinary success. Uh, still no Gandalf die, damn. I was really hoping for a Gandalf die. Uh, so, he, uh, I, I can't remember if somebody if I knows the rules a little better on the other side, let me know if there is something for extraordinary successes. I don't think so. I think Gandalf die is the only way you get to use some of the cool, uh, special damages. Uh, let me look. Actually, I'll look it up real quick. We're no, we're no hurry. Uh, 
Yeah, so unfortunately, Gandalf die are the only way you get to do uh, the special ones, but he does hit, uh, and you see him jab the spear through uh, the orc chieftain, kind of piercing right through his heart as blood pours down Syrian. Uh, you see the stoic rager get like a little hint of a smile uh, as he finally catches Varnak, the orc chieftain who'd been plaguing the lands, uh, and he rips it out, uh, and... Gvarnok falls to his death. But Syria looks through and there's still orcs assaulting the dwarves. Uh, you see the two remaining kind of fighting for their lives. We're going to do our last telling check to see how the dwarves prevail against this threat. Uh, so, uh, same thing. So we have to print it in a yes or no function. So are the dwarves doing well against the orcs? The remaining two dwarves. So roll that d12. Oh, should we do it in the thing so it'll give me the right feet die? So, so oh, that's a five. So. This is likely. So, as we said, we're going to roll a d20. Uh, if it's 11 or more, the, the dwarves are okay. Uh, and then we'll survive this threat fight. If it is less, the orcs wipe them out uh, before Syrian can save them. Oh, nat 20. Sick. Uh... Uh, so we're going we're gonna to say this is a pretty favorable result. Uh, even though that doesn't go into the one rig rules, we're saying that now. The two remaining dwarves, seeing the orcs take down their comrades, go into a blood rage. Uh, you see the leader, Galen uh, Glane, uh, heft his ferocious looking axe uh, and you see the two just go through hacking and slashing diving into the hordes of orcs just taking out knees taking out uh axes to the chest just swinging swinging and swinging leaving body parts and uh fallen orcs in their wake uh and as siri looks through and joins the fray the two remaining orcs clear out or the two remaining or dwarves clear out the orcs uh, and save uh, and remain alive through the engagement. And at the end, you see kind of a scene full of carnage. Uh, there are bodies of orcs and dwarves strewn about the makeshift camp, but fortunately, two have survived in the threat of Varnak. Uh, the terrible, the orc who has been uh, targeting the merchant lanes has been vanquished. Uh, and you see Syrian goes and he helps, uh, he uses, actually we're going to do a roll for that. Uh, so the two of the dwarves that survive are in pretty rough shape. Uh, he's going to try to uh, do a little bit of healing for them. So uh, he actually had a special item. Uh, so we're going to work that in. Uh, with each of the class or with each of the heroic backgrounds and the heroic backgrounds are the kind of like heroic cultures I should say are races in this system so like the dwarves uh, the Dunedin the uh, elves hobbits all of that uh, and they get each of them get a different amount of useful starting items and it's just kind of something that you can use to give yourself a bonus on the roll uh so he pulls out this healing ointment made from king's root uh king's her king's leaf king's leaf uh if i remember right from the books it's been a while since i've read it don't at me if i'm wrong uh and he pulls that out and he begins kind of uh massaging it into a paste and kind of muddling it in and uh or kind of massaging it and muddles it into a paste uh and he begins to apply it to the dwarves uh and We'll see if his healing does anything. So we're going to probably be our last roll for uh, this actual play. Uh, and before we do that too, uh, if you haven't yet, uh, throw in ring uh, for your chance to win a copy of the One Ring system. Uh, so throw it in. We've got, uh, how many do we have so far? We've got six users in there too. So uh, sweet, throw it in. Uh, maybe you'll be one of the lucky uh, winners there. Uh, so check it out uh, and see how that goes. Uh, also, if you haven't yet, uh, I'm gonna throw this in too. Check out our YouTube if you wanna see some more uh, in-depth looks at the rules for the One Ring system. We've done uh, breakdowns on how to build a PC. We built Syrian. 
Uh, we did how to play the Strider system, and we did how to go through the adventuring phase. And that's what we did today. Is we did uh, we did pretty much all of the adventuring phase. We had the journey section with Syrian trekking through the woods and having a ton of bad dice luck and failing a lot of events, uh, getting some fatigue stacked up. Uh, and then we got to uh, have a little bit of a conversation. What I could have done, what actually I should have done with the dwarves now that I think about it, uh, there's a third pillar of the adventuring phase, so the council, so kind of the social pillar, which is basically some kind of like a skill adventure way to do a social encounter, which could have worked well for the dwarves and he was trying to convince them to leave. Slipped my mind at the moment, but unfortunately we won't get to see that portion played out. But we did get to dump into combat. So you got to see the different stances, the different things you could do. There's more actions and things like that that you could do. But you got to see how that combat system played. Uh, we almost got down to Weary or uh, for our own Syrian uh, himself. And if you were going through with a group uh, or even with a strider, if you wanted to really kind of challenge yourself and put yourself to the paces, you could do a more in-depth combat and make it a little more strategical and more like chess against yourself. But with this being... Uh, streamed or televised i thought it'd be a little bit better just to make a quicker combat just again see how everything flows and goes on that side but let's get to see his last role so healing is actually one of his best skills i kind of built him because i thought he'd be a, a strong warrior with the three ranks and spears but he likes to heal too he likes to, to take care of those who have been harmed by the uh the shadows of mordor so hopefully this will come out well i'm not going to do any hope die for it Success. Uh, so you see him going through, and this is favorite form, so we got to roll 2d12, take the highest. Uh, and he goes through, uh, and he works that salve in uh, and helps to heal uh, the... Uh, the, the halfling, or the, not the halfling, the dwarfs that were attacked by Varnuk and his dastardly crew of orcs. Uh, and that's where we're going to end. You see, Syrian helps to bury the dead uh, and helps the dwarf the remaining dwarfs bring their loot into or their their, their merchants hall uh, into the city they were going to sell in uh, but afterwards Syrian gets back on the road and begins his wandering again heading back to the silver harbor to check back in with Galarian uh, and let her know of his success and see what her next mission is for him sweet so we did it. Uh, so we got to go through. Uh, this is my first solo play. Kind of fun. I, don't, I like having a table, though. I, I, I think this would be a good one. I probably won't do too many more streams with solo play. I hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, but I like having a table to bounce off of and kind of riff with a little bit. But it was a cool way to do this system during the summer months with a lot of my crew uh, wasn't able to make it for this one. So it worked out well on that side. So with this... We're getting close to the uh, the giveaway time, so uh, give one last call on this side. Uh, throw a ring into the system uh, if you want your chance to bring this home to your crew. Uh, so put it in. Uh, we'll basically we'll be giving away a copy of the PDF uh, through uh, Drive Through RPG. They've got a cool gift way to gift it. So if you do win, make sure to message me uh, and uh, let me know uh, your information, and uh, we'll be able to make sure we raffle that off. Uh, sweet, so, uh, it is in there. Oh, th th thanks, guys. I really appreciate that. Uh, it's, uh, definitely something new for me on this side, but I, I overall enjoyed it. Uh, definitely wish I had somebody else to do some talking for me, but <laughs> overall, it was, it was good. Uh, sweet. Uh, so let's, let's do some rolling. Oh yeah, no worries, man. All right, sweet. Uh, going once. Actually, uh, before we do that, so next month, uh, Blades of the Dark. So I don't know my dates yet for this. I've actually got to put it out to my crew and see kind of when everybody wants to play. Uh, it'll probably, I don't know, it'll probably be on a Thursday maybe, not a Wednesday. Uh, Got to be a little careful with, uh, just to make sure I balance my time at home a little well with my wife. I can't do too many Wednesday ones, so probably be a Thursday one. Uh, we play some of my other D&D game. 
Uh, so check it out, Blades of the Dark. Uh, we'll be doing videos like we did for the One Ring over how to create PCs and how to run the system and first impressions. From what I've heard, it's a little bit of a lighter rule system, so it'll be kind of cool to see how that goes. Uh, but I've used features from Blades of the Dark before, like the clocks and all the uh, some of the different things that come along with them, so it'll be cool to play the actual system and see how it goes. So stay tuned for that. Sometime at the end of August, we'll be doing that. Uh, but let's see who our lucky winner is. Oh, sweet. Uh, Mikey, uh, Mikey B. Sit for all uh, You are the winner, so you will be able to get a PDF copy of the One Ring system. Uh, message me. Um, just you know, whisper me uh, your contact information, and I'll make sure we get that out to you tonight. Uh, and uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, so uh, before I wrap up, do I thank you guys all uh, for coming through uh, and hanging out with me with uh, this, uh, this solo adventure. Uh, I had some fun with it. Uh, definitely uh, a little bit outside the norm, but I, I had a blast. Uh, actually, one of the few adventures I didn't get through my beer, which kind of tells how much I was talking on this side, but still had a blast with it. Uh, and uh, so things are coming up. Uh, so come by next Tuesday. Every Tuesday, Star Wars Tuesday on the channel. Uh, we run uh, Invasion next Tuesday, which is my campaign uh, dealing with uh, the... Uh, the crew, they, they don't have a crew name, but basically the, the crew of Intrepid Adventures who are trying to push back against the invading Yuzon Vong forces. Uh, so come hang out with us there on Kashyyyk now, and uh, they're going to have some fun with that planet next session. Uh, and then uh, the other Tuesdays are the Stranded Campaign run by Keith Odishi. Uh, and the next time, we're going to be chased by some sh Shaobots. Uh, so some of the native people of the planet that we're stranded on, uh, we put ourselves in a little bit of a rough position. So uh, see if we survive that next uh, the Tuesday after, which will be like the 9th of August, I think. Uh, so come hang out then. Um, next big thing we're doing too, sometime next month we're doing Mutants and Masterminds as well. I've really missed that system, so uh, I think the 17th is when we're planning on it. Come hang out there. Uh, but thanks everybody for joining us, and I hope you all have a good night. See you next time.